What you are looking at are a series of 60-foot or 18.3 meter high lava fountains being continuously generated along a cluster of four fissures in Kilauea's Napao crater. These fissures, measuring a combined 1,075 feet in length, opened up at around 4 a.m. local time on September 17th. And, eight hours later, this eruption is still going strong, causing 89,000 square meters or 22 acres of ground to become covered in a layer of fresh lava. This is in contrast to the 60 and 105 minute long eruptions which occurred on September 15th and 16th at a location 3,000 feet to the west-southwest. However, at noon local time on September 17th, for the first time since September 14th, it appears as though the transfer of magma from Kilauea's summit magma chamber into its east rift zone seemingly ceased, as you can see via the stabilization of Kilauea's summit tilt meter chart. Now, this could be merely a temporary blip, but it suggests that the latest episode of Kilauea's first east rift zone eruption since 2018 may soon come to a close. A quick later edit, I want to note that approximately 9 hours later, this eruption has drastically decreased in intensity, narrowing down to only a singular fissure. It is likely to soon cease altogether, which when this does occur means that yet another eruptive episode of less than 24 hours in length, which is typical for this portion of Kilauea's Middle East Rift Zone, has come to a close. However, past historical eruptions in the same area suggest that this is more likely to represent yet another pause rather than a true cessation of eruptive activity. I am basing this assertion from 11 different eruptions which occurred in the same area during the 20th century, which each created patches of lava fusion along magma dikes between 3,000 and 60,000 feet in length, which largely trended eastward over time. In other words, multiple less than 24 hour long eruptive episodes occurred across multiple days, with several pauses in between them. Thus, what we are currently witnessing represents activity as usual at Kilauea, and we might expect the existing dike to produce additional patches of lava fusion and burnt vegetation slightly further to the east-northeast. Theoretically speaking, a dike may exist as far east as a kilometer east of the summit of the Pu'u'u'u cone, meaning we soon could witness eruptions in a potentially concerning area. My concern revolves around the fact that the center of the more than 800 foot high cone built by a 35 year long eruption acts as a barrier which diverts lava flows from the west away from any structures south towards the Pacific Ocean. However, lava erupted to the east could begin flowing towards a series of communities built on top of geologically recent lava flows. But, I want to reiterate that these type of fissure eruptions are unlikely to be long-lived enough to produce lava flows even capable of getting close to the structures in question, with only a singular eruption in 1977 out of 11 20th century eruptions taking 18 days to reach such an area. In other words, if you live here on Hawaii's Big Island, you are not yet in any danger, but should keep an eye on and stay up to date with the ongoing eruptive episode just in case of a very low probability, but theoretically possible scenario activity does propagate this far eastward. And no, lava is not currently deemed likely to erupt any further to the east than this, including in the area impacted by the 2018 flank eruption at Leilani Estates. So, if we combine three days worth of eruptions, how much lava was emplaced? While there are not yet any official measurements, my geolocation attempts suggest 26.3 acres of ground has been covered by around 150,000 cubic meters of lava. If correct, this suggests an average eruption rate of 4 cubic meters per second, which is quite a low number. Thanks for watching. I will post another video on Kilauea's eruptive activity if further changes occur during the next week. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.